Hi everyone, how is it going? I wanted to make a quick tutorial or overview over um, how I found the new Godot 4 multiplayer um, RPC notation is working. Um, because I'm currently converting my project from Godot 3 to Godot 4, and of course you have to convert a lot of code, and I found a couple of tutorials and they are quite uh, neat and nice and showing how um, the new setup uh, works with these new notations. Um, but they often only work in kind of like a listen server setup where you have like in one project, one script, both the code for the server and the client, which from some cases might work. But for instance, if you want to have an authoritative dedicated server setup, which I think for many cases is actually quite an interesting thing, um, then you have to take a bit uh, more care than um, you had to do with um, Godot 3. And yeah, I just want to quickly uh, show you a, a demo example. So I have two projects. One is called like the server, and yeah, it just is, yeah, has this server label here and a bit of script that just kind of um, creates the multiplayer peer uh, down here, actually. Yeah, creates uh, this init multiplayer peer, create server, and setting this uh, multiplayer peer. In this line, um, all this is just standard, and I set up a connection so when another peer connects to the server, and um, then it will just um, print this to console and I made this small um, print to vbox method here, which in this overview just uh, kind of like adds more labels here so that we kind of have a pseudo console here. Um, then quite similarly here, the client project, so it's a very actually a different project as I also would have it uh, with my game. So I have one server project that kind of lies somewhere on a dedicated server with no output. So it's a headless server setup. And then I have my, my other project with the client code. Uh, of course, here like the the level structure is the same. This is, I think, um, this was the same already. It's important to have this. Uh, yeah, this was very same in uh, Godot three. Sorry for speaking a bit in loops. Um, again, here the code um, very straightforward as well. I um, make the connection so when um, the, uh, between the single connected server to a joined client. So whenever there is um, the connection. Uh, there will be some code running here, but first we again create the init multiplayer peer, connect to the local machine with the same uh, port as we had in the server project, setting that and just print joining server. And then once the connection is established, this method should fire automatically. Uh, we have another printing connection established. And then I have this maybe a bit um, convolved setup here, but this is just um, to, dem to demonstrate. Uh, I would take my um, client ID, define the player name, and then call a method on the server. Please server respond the player with this ID and the player. And we have here this um, corresponding method, which again, as a placeholder, just says, okay, spawn the player. And then calls to, actually, this would run to all connected clients, but in this example, just back to this connected client saying, okay, now please create the player node. And uh, this method, of course, then is present here. So this should kind of work, or at least this was kind of how it worked in Godot 3. And let's see what happens if we start the server. And the client. So we see, okay, connection is established. So the server sees, okay, the peer is coming in. And it says here also, I'm joining the server, connection established, calling to spawn player, but then it stops. It does not actually call the spawn method on the, um, on the server and what's happening here. Um, we already get indications from the debugger here telling that in this method, uh, the up join is client, unable to get the RPC configuration for the function server spawn player, which we call here. Um, so this is now the thing that which is new in Godot 4 that the um, like the uh, RPC configuration, like how this RPC is called, is it reliable, unreliable, whatever, who can call it. Uh, this is all kind of done in this um, annotations here as the function decorators and not from within this call itself how it was uh, before in, in Godot 3. Um, so in order to kind of deduce all this behavior, of course, uh, this project needs to know this function, which currently it doesn't. It's the server is only present on the server. Uh, this function is only present on the server. So the workaround here is to take this function uh, head, just copy it over here and can be empty. It's just important that it's present and that the project can deduce uh, the, uh, yeah, the, yeah, the notation and how this RPC is supposed to be called. Um, vice versa, the, um, 
the server here cause the other method on this the client, please create the player node. And again, this will fail because the server doesn't know the notation for this function. So again, vice versa, we just copy that over to the server. Whoops, can replace that just by pass this through, just kind of that this line works. It needs to have this very same method in the same script. And then we can give it a try. Server starting. Whoops, client starting. And whoops, now we have all the lines that we want. So we have the connection. We have the call that the player wants to be spawned with the test name, uh, with the player name test player. And here we have the connection established, and then it's actually running the code to create the player. Great, so now all this communication is working as before and as expected. Um, one more thing, <laughs> because I mean, now this is working and fine, but we can still very easily break it. Because, for instance, now we're on the client. Um, let's just say we still have some client-specific RPC function, which now doesn't do anything. And this is also an RPC, which can be called. Uh, let's see what happens now if we just add in this one function. Starting the server. Voila, starting the client. And guess what? It's not working anymore. So we only get to the connection, but now these the other RPCs actually don't work anymore. And why the hell is that? Um, it's special, but uh, actually also the, the debugger tells us now already what's going on here. Uh, we have this uh, process simplify path, which tells us um, make sure to have the same methods on both nodes in this uh, scene here, in this world scene. Um, so what we just did now to violate this behavior, and I can just tell you a little bit more in just a second, but just to recapitulate, we just added this function here and also made this an, an RPC function. And now the server and the client, they have on this very same script, on this node here, different sets of RPC functions, and this doesn't work. Um, if this was just a null function, not an RPC callable one, let's just make a demonstration, this should now work again. So this is really just, um, make sure to have really the same set of RPC callable methods on both the server and the client. Yeah, now we get until the end. Um, so this is again a bit special. So um, just to recap, make sure to have all the same RPC functions on both the server and the client, make them empty uh, if you just want to have, yeah, then as, as, as a placeholder just to get the notation and don't have any exclusive functions unless they are just really purely locally running, then this is no issue. And if you want to read a bit more about this, and there is, um, you can just like Google for that. Uh, there was an, a, um, a commit for that, that they optimized the data structures for sending the um, RPC information and they compress stuff a bit more. And not, now not only the, um, the node path needs to be the same, but also like the set of um, RPC functions in, in the script because this is hashed and then there's a hash checksum. And if there are different RPCs on the server and the client, then they can't connect and it doesn't work. Okay, um, oops. I hope this kind of helps you a bit, helps you a bit and maybe spares you some time of fiddling this out because this is really a bit different and not so much um, reported here and a bit hidden and occluded, I would say. Okay, I hope it's useful um, for one of you or maybe none, then I hope I didn't waste your time watching this and yeah. See you later. Bye.